In this video, I'm gonna be ranking every single new Titans card from worst all the way to best in NBA 2K23. My team going over the three Dark Matters, the Yao Ming, the Ben Simmons, the Dirk, all of the Galaxy Opals, and all of the Pink Diamonds, and just ranking all of these cards from the worst card to the best card in the Titan set. So at the number 13 spot, in my opinion, is gonna be the Pink Diamond Marco Fultz. It's kind of crazy to say because He's not like a terrible card. Like I feel like at most constant drops, if you look at interdimensional, I'm trying to think of who was the worst card in that set. Uh, I know George Mearson was up there for one of the worst cards. There was also like Jalen Suggs. Like he's kind of on that like Jalen Suggs type of level. But then you look at the other position, there was that like Allen Iverson card. So I feel like Marco Fultz really isn't that bad to be the worst card in this set. The only problem with the card is the fact that he's six foot four at the point guard position, which at this point in the year, is just a little bit too short to compete against those meta point guards. Six foot 10 wingspan though would definitely help him out on the defensive end animations wise jump shot is solid i mean i liked his release a little bit on the amethyst version sigs are eh they're okay i mean the t max size up in the kobe escape are you know decent sigs but definitely not comparable to like the tray escape or the curry escape and then the t max size up isn't really comparable to like the garland size up the steve francis size up the kyle lowry size up there's like a pretty big difference between those dribble stakes so marco fultz definitely not a bad titans card but in my opinion the worst card from the titan set at the number 12 spot though is going to be another really solid budget option in Bruce Bowen. He's a shooting guard, small forward, six foot seven with a six foot ten wingspan. Once again, a card that's really not that bad in game. Like I would say Marco Fultz is like borderline usable. You could definitely use Bruce Bowen in game. He's got the size. He's got the defense. You know, tons of good Hall of Fame defensive badges. The problem is, is he doesn't really have that great of a driving dunk and his sigs really aren't the best as well. So if you're just looking for a three, and D shooting guard, a guy that just plays lockdown defense on the perimeter, you know, can, can guard the best player, can, you know, get steals, blocks, that type of stuff, and then can just knock down a wide open three. That is going to be Bruce Bowen. But we got to this time of the year. You know, at this time of the year, cards need to be able to drive to the basket, create their own shot, have better dribble sigs, you know, be able to do everything on the court at a very high level. That's why he's going to be a lot lower on this list. But if you're just looking for a guy that plays defense, lockdown card can knock down a wide open three. I think Bruce Bowen pretty much does that job perfectly well. Also having very solid defensive tendencies at the number 11 spot for me personally, though, is going to be the pink diamond Josh Jackson. A very runnable card in game like Bruce Bowen, you know, Marco Fultz are cards that I would maybe use in game. Josh Jackson's very solid at the shooting guard position. Being six foot eight, he's got great defensive stats with at least 90 in every single defensive category. He's got Hall of Fame anchor, challenger, clamps, glove, menace, you know, off ball pest. He's got Hall of Fame clamp breaker, quick first step. Jump shot wise, haven't used this card in game because there's no other Josh Jackson. So if this is a good jump shot, he might actually be a little bit higher on this list. I'm just kind of going off like I haven't used his jump shot, but I do think Josh Jackson all around is a great shooting guard uh, shooting guard card in my team. At the number 10 spot is going to be the pink diamond Hassan Whiteside. He's a great all around budget big. I mean, he's a center power forward, seven foot with a seven foot seven wingspan, has a great player modeling game. You know, uh, defense is good at 98 block, 95 interior defense, 88 steel, 88 perimeter. He's got great Hall of Fame defensive badges. All around is a very solid card, you know, on the defensive end. Offensively, he's athletic. He can finish around the rim. His jump shot's like, okay. I've definitely, I've used this card in game and it's definitely an okay jump shot. It's not my favorite in the world, but I think you can green somewhat consistently with his release in the catch and shoot off the dribble. It's going to be very hard to green with, but I do think Hassan Whiteside is the 10th best card in the tight end set. At the number nine spot is going to be the Opal Jared Wallace, just a really well-rounded shooting guard, six foot seven with a six foot 10 wingspan. You look at the stats, that's really no flaws like he's got pretty much perfect stats and badges my only flaw with the card will be his jump shot being a solid release nothing too crazy good about it it's not my favorite release in the game but it's also not terrible so he's just like a great card all around on paper you know stats wise he's got good dunk packages with the quick jobs off one the front clutches the kobe escape or the kobe size up i should say really is isn't the best and i'm not the, i'm not the biggest fan of it personally john wall escape is good you know curry behind the back is solid and then i do like the donovan mitchell uh leaner as well so jared Wallace, just a great all-around shooting guard card at the number eight spot is actually going to be the pink diamond Xavier. Uh, I almost said Xavier Tillman, Xavier McDaniel. You know, a great small forward who's six foot nine, seven foot wingspan. Stats are super well rounded, like really no flaws in his stats. You know, 82 three mile might be a little bit low, but if you look at his jump shot, the Isaiah Roby base is not my favorite base in the game, but the CJ McCollum upper, you know, he's got like a good release. There's nothing too crazy. You know, you know what a card he actually reminds me a lot of? 
is Tony Kukoc. That, I think that might actually be the perfect uh, perfect comparison. I'll just quickly go over that. I think Tony Kukoc is the perfect comparison, honestly, to Xavier uh, Xavier, Xavier McDaniel because, you know, about the same player build, about the same wingspan height, stats. I mean, Xavier McDaniel actually has better stats except for the three ball. You look at their badges. I mean, very similar badges as well. Tony Kukoc might have a big advantage in the, you know, on the shooting badges. But then animations wise, they both have very, you know, okay jump shots not great jump shots but they got great dribble sigs ku coach got the garland size up and the tray escape but then xavier mcdaniel has the curry escape with our curry size up sorry with the tray escape so very similar cards i would say that's probably my best comparison for xavier mcdaniel all around though a great small forward in the game at the number seven spot is going to be the opal tyson chandler he's a center power forward seven foot one with a seven foot three wingspan going to be another type of hassan Whiteside type of card like elite defensively super athletic he's really quick for a tyson chandler card it just comes down to his jump shot if you can agree with it uh, if you can agree with it consistently for me i mean it's a solid release Another kind of sign white side where if it's in the catch and shoot, I feel like it's a pretty good jump shot. I think I can green fairly consistently with Tyson Chandler, you know, after using him in game. And then he's also got some pretty good dribble sigs with the D Mitch size up and the John Wall escape. So Tyson Chandler all around an amazing galley simple card. And I do think he's going to be the seventh best card in the tight end set. At the number six spot, though, is going to be the Opal Luol Dang. Just an amazing all around six foot nine shooting guard, seven foot wingspan. If you guys use his diamond, he was such an elite budget card for so long in game. And he's going to be another probably great budget card for a decent amount of time you know he's got that size the defense you know to play the shooting guard position for a while he's got a 92 block 98 steel 98 perimeter 95 interior defense has great hall of fame defensive badges even offensively like the card's solid like he's got a 95 three ball good hall of fame shooting badges he's quick he can drive to the basket he's got some okay dunk packages his jump shot i feel like is actually pretty solid i love the d mitch size of the curry escapes obviously crazy crazy the curry escape is obviously crazy good and you can obviously hit people with the curry slide and then he's also got the d book leaner which is great and then very solid defensive tendencies so all around luol dang just a beast at the shooting guard position at the number five spot is going to be the opal michael red a card that i did not expect to be this good because they really souped him out you know yes he's a little bit undersized like not undersized but He's a little bit shorter for the shooting guard position, only being six foot six, but I think he can hold his own on the defensive end. But if we're talking about offense, that's where Michael Ryan, uh, Michael Ryan, Michael Red is going to shine a lot. You know, having a 99 three ball, 98 mid range, tons of good Hall of Fame shooting badges, obviously on Michael Red. And then animations wise, he's got the Derek Fisher base, the Trey Young upper. So going to be a super quick jump shot on very quick timing. He's also got the Trey fade. He's got the Garland size up, Steph Curry escape, Dame behind the back, quick drops off one from clutches even solid defensive tendencies all around this card is going to be an absolute beast on the offensive end at the number four spot though i feel like it's going to be dark matter dirk you can maybe even put michael red over dirk if you wanted to i still think he's going to be a great power forward he's got the size you know at the power four position being seven foot one with a seven foot three wingspan i think he plays solid defense in game but offensively offensively we all know that's what dirk's going to be the best at if you wanted to put michael red over him i think you definitely can but dirk just all around a great solid power forward in my opinion at the number three spot is going to be this Opal Jalen Rose card, a way better card than even I expected, even though I knew he was going to be really good. I did not expect him to be this good. He's got 60 total badges, which is amazing. He's a six foot eight point guard, seven foot wingspan. Stats are all around great. Like I said, badges are good, except for his defensive hops. If he had more defensive hops, his card would be easily a top five point guard. I think that's the only thing really holding him back is the defensive Hall of Fame badges. But animations wise, he's got the Tony Parker base which I think is a very solid base this year. He's got the Kyle Kuzma upper on very quick timing. He's got the best dribble sigs in the game with this D Francis size up, the tray escape. He's got the quick drops off one, the front clutches. They even gave this card some elite defensive tendencies with a 90, 92 on ball steal tendency, 88 contest shot, 88 block shot, all around Jalen Rose debatably might be a top five point guard in the game even with having those gold defensive badges at the number two spot though is going to be ben simmons a great point guard six foot eleven with a seven foot wingspan for the titans one i wouldn't say he's clear number one the best point guard in the game now if we're talking about the hero version of ben simmons he is definitely the best point guard because of the 91 three ball the hall of fame shooting badges that is going to make a huge difference because on the titans one that is the only flaw the fact that he's got no shooting badges especially on hall of fame and then he only has a 75 three ball but it's going to make such a difference with this you know hero one having a 91 three ball tons and tons of good hall of fame shooting badges the jump shot is going to be the same which isn't great but 
I still think he probably will be the best point guard in the game on his hero version for sure. Now on the Titans, I don't know because there's a pretty big difference, you know, with a three ball rating and the shooting badges. But for the Titan set, I do think he's the second best card. And then at the number one spot, it is obviously going to be the man, the myth, the legend of 2K22 and that or 2K23, I should say. And that is the Dark Matter Yao Ming card. Now they really didn't make him that much crazy, you know, good compared to his Galaxy Opal. There's really not going to be too big of a difference besides the badges and his jump shot being a little bit quicker. Like if we quickly compare the cards, you know, compare this Yao Ming to the Galaxy Opal, obviously same height, same wingspan, same player model. Stats, yes, go to the Dark Matter, but not by a crazy margin. You look at the badges, like I mentioned, that's going to be the only difference. Difference. You know, getting Hall of Fame catch and shoot, getting Hall of Fame Claymore, Dead Eye, Green Machine, Guard Up, you know, that's going to make slightly a difference. Getting like Pogo Stick, you know, Menace might make a slight difference. Workhorse is pretty good. You know, playmaking wise, he gets Hall of Fame Unpluckable. That's obviously great. Animations wise, just going to be a tad bit, uh, tad bit, you know, quicker of a jump shot. But it is nice that he can move a little bit if you need to with the Kobe Escape and the D Book Size Up. Obviously, not going to be amazing at dribbling the ball, but still, he can move a little bit. And then tendencies are going to be the same as well. So yeah, guys, that's going to be me ranking every single card in the Titan set from the worst card all the way to the best. But let me know in the comment section down below your guys' favorite card from the Titan set. And let me know what you guys think about my ranking. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.